Good afternoon. My name is Morgan and I am a mom to eight children, seven still at home. And today I'm going to be showing you how to make homemade yogurt. Super simple and super fast. I'm not going to be using the instant pot. I'm just going to be using a regular pot. The only special tool you're going to need is a thermometer. They're really cheap at Walmart. You could probably get them on Amazon equally as cheap and probably in the first batch of yogurt that you make, you'll make your money back because making yogurt is a huge money saver for our family. So I'm gonna start out and show you how to do it. In this particular batch of yogurt, I'm using 1% milk, but if you want fat-free Greek yogurt, you need to use fat-free milk. We push this pot to the limits in pouring our milk in here. It just barely holds four gallons and it's so heavy that I cannot carry it by myself. So awesome children to the rescue. She helped me carry it to the stove and we only spill a few drops. It is truly a miracle. This is the candy thermometer that I use. I wish I could remember how much I paid for it. It's not much. I want to say it's less than five dollars at Walmart. First thing you're going to do is put this in there and then set a timer for about 20 minutes to check it. So I'm making four gallons of yogurt here. So I set my timer for around 20 minutes, but you probably, if you're only making one gallon or less, want to definitely keep your eye on it because you do not want it to burn and you need to stir it every few minutes from the bottom up so that the milk doesn't burn. What you're doing now is bringing your milk up to 180 degrees. Once you get it up to 180 degrees, you just take it off the burner and let it cool back down to 120 degrees. That's what I've done here. Once you get it to 120 degrees, you're gonna add one cup of yogurt per gallon of milk. Basically, you just need those live bacteria or cultures like the lactobacillus and staphylococcus or all those fancy words that when you buy yogurt, make sure that it has live cultures in it for this to work. So I'm adding four cups of yogurt from the last batch that I made. Once you make a batch, you can just start using the old batches that you make um, because it is yogurt. So you just scrape all that out of there and stir it in pretty good. Um, you stir from the bottom, get it stirred around really good. And that's that. Sometimes people like to put their yogurt in an ice bath to bring it down to 120 degrees faster. You can totally do that. Usually I have so much going on in my life. I just scoot it off the burner and a couple hours later it's down to 120 degrees and then I just move on to add the yogurt. You can do it however you like. Once you get that yogurt added, you put the lid on it and you just wrap it up in blankets. I use our beach towels here and I just wrap it up. What you're trying to do basically is keep it from getting cold too fast. You want it to cool down super, super slow. You want it to basically stay really warm so that that yogurt that you put in the milk has plenty of time to turn that whole batch into yogurt. So you let that sit for eight to 12 hours just on your counter. After it sits on your counter, I got up at like midnight that night and put it in the refrigerator you put it in your refrigerator and I like to leave it in the refrigerator overnight. You can leave it in there as long as you want. Sometimes I leave it in there for multiple days because at this point it is yogurt. You can eat it, you can flavor it, you can sweeten it, it is done. It is exactly the same as a yogurt you buy in the store, plain. So it's ready. This is exactly what you want it to look like. It's like a solid blob in there. It's pretty thick. Mine always gets pretty thick. Um, sometimes I've made a few batches that are a little runnier, so that is totally up to you. Next, you're just gonna need to get some strainers and some bowls, because what I do at this point is strain mine into Greek yogurt. So 
So I'm just gonna use a measuring cup to scoop the yogurt into the strainers that I've lined with coffee filters. You can see how thick this yogurt already is and it's perfectly fine right now to just go ahead and eat, feed it to your kids, put it in smoothies, whatever you wanna do. A good way to sweeten it is for every gallon, you can use about a cup of sugar, maple syrup, um, if you do coconut sugar, you may want to add a little bit more because coconut sugar is not quite as sweet. You can add vanilla flavoring, strawberry flavoring, any kind of flavoring that you want. You can also blend up some fruit and add into it. If you like chunks of fruit, you can chop up fruit and add into it. Um, I never do that. I usually sweeten it and add flavorings and stuff to it as I go. But most of the time, this almost probably 50% of this gets used in smoothies and the rest of it um, we just sweeten with coconut sugar and stevia but I just put all this in here all that I'm doing now is straining out the whey so I put all the Greek yogurt in here and then I let it sit for about four to six hours and just strain all the way out and that's basically making it a lower carb option it's going to be a lot thicker and just a little bit more protein in it. So I'll show you what that looks like. So this is what the yogurt looks like after it's been straining for four hours, about almost five hours actually. It gets pretty thick. Can you see the, I've already had to dump this some off of that one. So it will shrink down a lot more. You can see this one shrink down more because it has like more um, space to shrink. It's got about that much whey in it. This one is completely full of whey. So. So you can totally keep this whey if you want to and add it to your children's smoothies and stuff like that. Um, if you have kids that need to gain weight, that would be a great thing for them. If you're trying to lose weight, then you probably don't want to partake in the whey. You probably want to just have the yogurt. Um, all these kids around here, I've had different times where I've kept the whey and added it back into some of their smoothies because I used to only do, I used to keep half of this yogurt and the other half Greek yogurt, but then the kids always wanted mine. They liked it better, so I just make it all Greek yogurt now. And we all have the same. So it works for us. You can do it however it works for you. Figure out which way your children like it or which way you like it and have it that way. So this yogurt is now Greek yogurt. You take about four gallons of yogurt and once you strain it down, you'll get about two to two and a half gallons of Greek yogurt. So if you think about how much two and a half gallons of Greek yogurt would cost, let's just round down and say it's $3 a quart then you get 10 quarts times three, that's like $30 worth of yogurt here for the price of four gallons of milk, which here in Georgia, milk is about $2 a gallon right now. So for $8, we got $30 worth of yogurt if you were gonna buy it at the store. So this, you can see why I make my own yogurt. This is a huge, money saver for us. Sometimes I make this much yogurt every two weeks. Sometimes it lasts a month. I've never had any go bad um, because we go through it pretty quickly. So you just figure out how much you want to make for yourself. I highly encourage you guys to try this. It's super, super budget friendly to help you stretch your budget a little bit further to make your own yogurt. You're probably wondering why I don't just leave the yogurt in this giant container. Well, I found that if you as you use the yogurt up, you wanna keep it in the containers that fit it better so that less air touches it. So in this big container, as I used it up, I would need to put it into a smaller and smaller container and there is a lot of air that would touch it in there. So in these quart jars, I find that I don't really ever have to change the container. If it's half empty or not, I go through a quart of yogurt pretty quickly. Um, and so there's not a lot of air that touches it. So I don't keep it in the giant containers. I keep it in smaller containers. That's just what works for us. If you're gonna go through it um, even faster than we do, then that big container would probably be fine. You just have to figure out what works for you as far as what kind of containers that you want to keep them in.